Hi guys, it is April from Getting Hugo With It. Today I'm going through a thriller shelf and we're doing another Con Marie with me. I think this is like 10, Con Marie, number 10, number 9, I can't remember. There have been so many. Uh, so essentially I'm decluttering my bookshelves, dwindling it down a little bit, keeping what sparks joy, getting rid of everything else. I have a really hard task ahead of me today. Really hard. So let's get into it. My bookshelves are a mess. I've shown them to you before. Here they are again. Double stacked. Gross. Uh, well, I, I don't mind the double stacked, but when it's like unruly, it's unruly double stacked. That's what it is. It looks a hot mess and it just need a little order and I need to get rid of books on here that I'm not super excited to read, you know? Um, so I have some rules for myself for Conmarie with me. The first is I have to bring a bookshelf down to 20 books. This shelf, I got 32 books, so I have to get rid of 12 books. Ugh. Um, and I can put two books on a limbo pile, which is great because I can, for, for books that I'm just like, I don't know, I don't want to read it right now. I also don't want to get rid of it. I don't know what in the world to do with it. I can throw it on the limbo pile and kind of go to the limbo pile and, and see what I want to do after that. Now, if, if I go over 20, which I could in this case, because there are 32 books, I have to go to my limbo shelf and take books off of there to make it all balance out. Um, ugh, not looking forward to this in a lot of ways. First book, of course, I'm keeping. It's Since We Fell by Dennis Lehane. This book, oh my goodness. It felt so weird. It's like two books in one. Um, first, we follow... Um, this woman named Rachel who is like this amazing journalist and we follow her just like I don't know crumble um, she becomes a shut-in and can't leave the house and we learn things about her marriage that are deeply disturbing and, and it, it just all comes to a head throughout the course of this book I really loved it I think this was my first Dennis Lehane and he is fantastic so I'm keeping this so far I'm not doing well Okay, let's see what we can do next. Okay, this is good at least. Um, Joe Nesbo. I have decided to get rid of all of my Joe Nesbo. I read The Snowman by him, which was fine. It was a detective series, which was just fine, but not amazing. And I, I don't really want to have all of these. So I was starting to collect them and then I was like, but you don't love them. I'm looking, I'm on the hunt for a detective series that I'm going to love, which I have hope for. I do have hope, but I don't think it's with Joe Nesbo, so I'm going to get rid of this one. Yay, one down. Like 11 to go. Luckily, there's the red breast that I can also get rid of, also by Joe Nesbo. Um, the River at Night is sounds like a lot of fun. This is about a group of girls who go on a vacation and they go like on a a wilderness adventure vacation. You could not see me doing any of these things like white water rafting or anything. I'm just not that person, but I could read about people like that. You know, people who are a little braver than me. Um, this is about uh, a group of girls who go on this adventure um, and then all hell breaks loose while they're, while they're on it. So uh, I would like to... Hmm, I'm going to put it on the limbo pile and see how I feel about it. All the Missing Girls is up next by Megan Miranda. This was her first novel and it works backwards. So you find out that um, these girls are going missing. You find out at the end what happens and then you work backwards in time to how it started. It sounds really good so I'm keeping it. The Dry by Jane Harper is another book I like to keep. This takes place in Australia. And we follow this man who's a federal agent. Um, he gets a call that his like childhood best friend killed himself as well as his whole family. So he goes back for the funeral. 
and he starts getting anonymous notes about the stuff that he did when he was a teenager. So I'd like to know and I'd like to see if I'd want to read more Jane Harper so I'm going to keep this. He Said She Said is supposed to be such a fun thriller about this couple who like in their spare time travel around to see solar eclipses. Well one time they go to one of the solar eclipses and um, they witness a woman being attacked. They get involved and then quickly regret it when um, people start like following them. It just sounds so disturbing and I, I want to read it. One of my friends, Sandra, read this and really liked it. So I have high hopes for this one. Next is The Ruins by Scott Smith. I'm gonna keep this because my Uncle Dennis um, recommended this one to me. This is about two couples who go to an archaeological dig and horrifying things happen. Like this is a horror book and I would like to know what that is. I think this might be a little bit of body horror in here which I don't love but I would like to find out what I think of it. Oh oh The Bat by Joe Nesbo. It can go. Next is Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. This follows a woman whose daughter, like teenage daughter, goes missing and it's years later, I think it has ruined her marriage and she starts dating a new person and she's like having some hope for her life and he's like, I'd really love for you to meet my daughter. She meets her daughter, his daughter, who looks remarkably like her own. Um, it sounds good, but I just, I'm not sure about it. I'm gonna put it in the limbo pile. Next is experimental films. Um, this is about something that's caught on film like years ago, like black and white film. Um, and it might solve the mystery of the disappearance of one of the first female movie makers in Canada. Um, I heard really good things about this. So I would like to keep this. It's also got a blurb on the front from Paul Tremblay and I mean, who am I to say no to Paul? So I'm gonna keep that one. Good Me, Bad Me is definitely something I'm keeping. It's about uh, a girl who, whose mother is a complete psychopath. She actually has to testify against her mother in court. Over this process, she starts going, but uh, am I like my mother? Is Is this, something inherent in me. Do I believe in nature or nurture? And it just sounds great and I have to keep it. Next is White Bodies. This is about two sisters. One of the sisters gets involved with this man who's like very possessive and not, it's, it's nerve wracking. Um, and so the other sister tries to get involved and tries to stop, stop it from happening. Um, she uh, goes onto the internet to join a group for people who have friends and family in abusive relationships. Um, and then suddenly the guy that her sister was dating dies or was he murdered? I just don't know if this is for me. Um, I'm gonna put this on my limbo shelf as well. I have to go through the limbo shelf afterwards and I recognize that, but yeah, Bird Box. Still, favorite horror book. Keeping it, keeping, keeping. Oh, Night Film by Marissa Pessel. I would really like to keep this. I listened to this on audio. I wish that I had read the actual book itself because it is jam packed with so much. So I, I think I might actually reread this at some point um, and read the physical copy. So that's staying. The Winter People by Jennifer McMahon. I am also keeping, this is like a, a ghost story. Um, very disturbing about uh, a, a family who moves into this home. Um, one of the girls finds a diary from the woman who lived there many years ago who was found dead in the fields surrounding this home. I, it is so atmospheric. I really enjoyed it. So I'm keeping that. So far I've only gotten rid of three books. I have to get rid of 12. Oh no. Okay. Lie to me by JT Ellison. I don't think JT Ellison is for me. This is a domestic thriller and she writes a lot of domestic thrillers 
and I don't think she's gonna be for me. So I'm just gonna let it go. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just get let it go. Oh, I'm thinking of ending things by Ian Reed. This is such a crazy ride. Like you don't know what's happening until the last, the last few pages. And I absolutely love him, so I'm keeping him forever. Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. Still to this day, the most disturbing, violent thriller I have ever read. I so love this book, but I'm also so cautious to um, suggest it to people because it's that violent. So I'm keeping it because I loved it. But yeah, maybe, no, just be careful when you go into that one. The Perfect Stranger by Megan Miranda is about uh, two girls who don't know each other incredibly well, but they both have a real need to get out of the city. They move to this small town and live together. And one day one of them dies or goes missing. The The girl who survives um, and is still alive, she kind of wonders whether her friend actually existed at all. I am slightly confused about this book. I thought it was about something different. In any case, I'm going to put this on limbo because I'm just not sure. Um, Gone Baby Gone is part of a series. Um, it's Dennis Lehane, but I think it's the fourth book or something, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Yeah. I will never part with this. The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. The creepiest ghost story. Classic. I freaking loved this book. And I will be keeping this. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Um, I read this and did not, I wasn't blown away by it, if I'm being honest. So uh, I'm going to let this go. I mean, it was fine. It's also got other stories in here, but I, I still, I don't know. I just, I think I'm just going to let it go. Slate House is about a house where... Um, people are invited who are really down on their luck and once they get in they realize they can't leave. I was just about to get rid of this but then I looked on the back and there are blurbs from Gillian Flynn and Anthony Doerr. Very different writers, both great writers but so different that now, now I'm so curious I'm totally keeping it. The Fever by Megan Abbott. This is about a fever that takes over a group of teenage girls and I just don't think I need it so I'm getting rid of it. The Kept is about, it's like a revenge story. Summer House with Swimming Pool is about uh, a group of family and friends who go to this summer house um, and dark things start to happen. Now I really enjoyed Henry Koch's The Dinner but this book is so yellowed. It's just not looking its finest. So I'm going to let this go. The Kind Worth Killing is absolutely one that I'm keeping. It's by Peter Swanson. It's like a game of cat and mouse and I really want to read it so I'm keeping it. The Road by Cormac McCarthy is supposed to be really hard to read, very hard hitting, but I would still like to read it at some point. Not right now, but at some point. So I'm going to keep this. It's kind of like apocalyptic I think that one. The Girl with a Clock for a Heart by Peter Swanson is about this middle-aged man who like goes to a pub every day like same kind of life like same thing that he does every single day and he goes and he like reminisces about this girl that he dated in college and how much he loved her and blah 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 and then she shows up and he's like ooh. So I didn't really mean it. I don't know. It sounds like there's something weird between them. So I am going to actually put this on limbo because I'm not sure, but it does. There's something about it that's interesting to me. Suffer the Children is a horror about when children come back from the dead and it just sounds like a lot of fun, so I'm keeping it. And then there is Don't You Cry by Mary Kubica. I don't think Mary Kubica is going to be for me. I shouldn't say that because I have never read her, but there's something about about her that I just don't think is for me. It's about a woman who disappears and there's a letter that's left behind to her roommate and he needs to decide what happened to her. I don't know. I'm just going to get rid of it. 
I, I went through it all. Now I need to figure out how well I did. I was able to get rid of 10 books. Um, now I need to get rid of two more. I've got a lot of books on my limbo shelf here. And I'm wondering if I can even get rid of more. Like, even if I just put two now on the limbo shelf, I would be laughing and I could keep the rest. But I want to kind of go through and see what I want to keep and what I don't. There's something about the river at night that just kind of excites me. It's a different kind of thriller, so I'm going to keep that. The Girl with the Clock for Heart. Huh... I think I'm going to keep The Girl with the Clock for a Heart because I really enjoy Peter Swanson's writing. So I have high hopes for it. I'm going to keep that. And then I'm going to put on my limbo The Perfect Stranger and then she was gone. So now I've taken like 13 off, two of them for limbo, 11 just to go to a library, donate to the library. I, yeah, I did it. I did it. I'm so proud of myself. This was going to be a hard one, but I, I did it. I persevered. Let me know in the comments below if there was a book here that I got rid of and you are angry or upset. I would love to know. Uh, would you have gotten rid of something else? That's another one. Uh, I'd love to know that too. I will see you soon. Okay. Bye guys.